All right. Now we just got done talking about the four common distributions used for hypothesis testing. And we said the standard normal is one, and think about the standard normal as coming from adding up a lot of independently generated random numbers. And if you have a standard normal, z, which is a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, then if you take that z, standard normal, and then you take it and you square those numbers, and then you add them up. If you add up n of them, then it's going to be a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. Now, to be honest, sometimes in the real world it's not n, it's n minus 1. But it's always going to be related to the number of things, the number of squared normal things added up. But commonly it'll be n minus 1. Now, if z is a standard normal and x is a chi-square with n degrees of freedom, then if you take that chi-square and you take the square root, divide it by the square root of n, the, which is usually the degrees of freedom, and on the top of the fraction you have a standard normal, then that is the definition of a t-distribution. And a t-distribution was invented by William Gossett because he did not know the population standard deviation. And when you're doing statistical testing and you only have an estimate of the standard deviation, an estimate of a standard deviation is a square root of a chi-square because it's the square root of adding up squared things. Think about the, the formula for a sample variance. So a t is something that's normally distributed on the top, divided by the square root of a chi-square, divided by the square root of n. And this looks just like what you're doing with a standard t-test for a one mean, for example. And so we have a standard normal, chi-square, t-distribution, and final distribution that you, you need to know all the time is an f-distribution. And an f is just the ratio of two chi-squared distributions. And so if you have something that's, let's call it A that's a chi-square and B that's another chi-square, an F is when you take the ratio of those two chi-squares, but first you divide them by their degrees of freedom for those chi-squared. So A divided by its degrees of freedom and another chi-square B divided by its degrees of freedom is an F. And remember, an F has two degrees of freedom, one for the numerator and one for the denominator. So keeping those four things in mind, you just want to get to the point in your statistics econometrics career where you don't have to memorize when do you use a chi-squared, when do you use an F. If you know what these four things are, you can see the pattern. Now, to test yourself, here are four common uh, tests, statistical tests used in econometrics. And so I want you to think about what kind of test you should use for these. So first, in econometrics, if you're doing a test for slopes, the null hypothesis is the slope is equal to B0. Now usually we just choose 0 as B0 to put in the null hypothesis. But the calculation is your estimate minus some hypothesized value divided by the standard error. And let's look at that standard error formula to see what that thing is on the bottom. And we've looked at this formula before. The standard error is the square root of the sum of the squared residuals on the top. And on the bottom is the square root of the, basically the variance of the explanatory variable you're looking at. The correlation between uh, that variable and other explanatory variables and square root of n minus k minus 1 that we call degrees of freedom for a regression. Now what does this thing on the top look like? Well the sum of something squared looks like a chi-squared but we're taking the square root of it and on the bottom we have a lot of stuff here I won't lie to you but look over here on the right we have the square root of degrees of freedom. So we have the square root of a chi-squared divided by the square root of degrees of freedom already you should be thinking about this t distribution here. Now all we have to do is verify that something on the top, this z, um, there's something normally distributed on top 
and this estimate here beta hat of the slope yes we're assuming that due to the way we calculate by adding lots of things up that that is going to have a normal distribution but because we're dividing by the square root of a chi square we're using the t distribution so now you know why we use a t not just the fact that we use a t now let's look at this next um, test this is called the blank test for overall significance of a regression let's look at how that's calculated we take the estimated sum of squares on the top divide it by k then we take the residual sum of squares on the bottom and divide it by n minus k minus 1 the degrees of freedom standard thing that we call degrees of freedom for a regression now ESS estimated sum of squares in a lecture long ago we we saw how you can calculate that by adding squared things up right estimated sum of squares when you sum squared things you should think of a chi-square but we have another one on the bottom this residual sum of squares on the bottom and look on the top we're dividing it by a number and on the bottom we're dividing by a number what pattern does that remind you of well this looks kinda like a chi-square because it's adding up squared things this is residual sum of squares we're adding up squared things and we're dividing by something called degrees of freedom pause and think about it okay it's an F this is an F with two degrees of freedom K in the numerator n minus K minus 1 in the denominator because it fits this pattern of a chi-squared divided by a degrees of freedom another chi-squared divided by a degrees of freedom so now you know why do we use an F test there now here's one that's less familiar to most people this is a blank test to see if a correlation is not equal to zero so the uh, null hypothesis is that the correlation is equal to zero the population correlation between these two variables and the alternate hypothesis is that the correlation is not equal to zero now look back pause the video look back at those formulas and see if you can figure out what it is now if you didn't figure it out I'm going to help you out by rewriting the formula I'm just going to move that n minus 2 square root of n minus 2 to the bottom now you have something on the top divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared divided by the square root of n minus 2 now pause and see if you can figure it out okay this is a t test to see if a correlation is not equal to zero why well look how similar this looks to the pattern for a t it's the square root of a chi-square divided by the square root of degrees of freedom and this test has n minus two degrees of freedom and what we're assuming on the top is that this thing r is a normally distributed object and on the bottom this is the square root of a chi-square divided by the square root of degrees of freedom now lastly let's look at this uh, called the jark barra test for normality now there are there are dozens there are probably more than dozens but there are about a dozen tests for normality that I'm familiar with you see different ones all the time and the jark barra test I like because it's pretty simple uh, normally distributed data should have no skewness and it should have a kurtosis of three however most statistics programs including R and Excel and most others they go ahead and subtract three so if you ask it to calculate kurtosis the number you're looking for should be zero uh, in those programs and so if that's what you're looking for for a normal distribution no skewness and no kurtosis then here's a test where you look at the skewness squared and add it to the kurtosis squared and then there's some corrections here for some you know, divide that by four and multiply by n over six right but the two important parts here are the skewness squared added to the kurtosis squared now look back in our list of possibilities do you think that is going to have a normal distribution a chi-squared an f or a t distribution now the jart barra test has a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom now why does it have two degrees of freedom because look back at our definition of a chi-square if you have something that has a normal distribution 
standard normal, and you add up n of them squared, right? You square them, add up n of them, it's going to have a chi-square distribution with n degrees of freedom. So down here, what we must be assuming when you do this jerk barra test for normality is that uh, this skewness has a normal distribution, and this kurtosis has a normal distribution, and this n over 6 and this 4 are really just correcting the calculations so that they have a standard normal distribution. So it's correcting to make sure that the mean is not, uh, and the variance are not different from 0 and 1. So what we're doing is taking a normal squared plus a normal squared. We're adding up two normal distributions squared, and so that's a chi-squared with two degrees of freedom. So go back and look at other hypothesis tests and use this method to figure out why you're using a particular distribution.